Hey, so this is a brand new series that I'm starting up called How We Learned X Languages and that number will change depending on who I invite on. Uh, but essentially I want to invite a lot of people uh, to talk about and compare and contrast their language learning methods because the thing is with learning languages there's no one stop shop, there's no uh, one way to, one correct way to do it. And for that reason I wanted to create this series and I really do hope you enjoy it and I do hope you learn something. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Akena Obi, and today is a very special day because I'm joined by my amazing friend Richard, who is part genius, part model, part actor, and part uh, the Thraki man beast. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? How are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. So, yeah, just tell us, um, let's just start off, just let's hop right into it. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and also, um, you know, your background and the languages that you speak. Sure. Okay, so uh, as you said, my name's Richard, and uh, I grew up in California. I love languages. Um, let's see, what else? I did my I did my bachelor's and master's in political science, surprisingly, but I am planning to do my PhD in uh, descriptive linguistics because I love grammar and uh, analyzing, you know, varieties of specific languages and uh, documenting okay. them. So the, the, the languages I speak, well, I've been learning, let's say I've been learning because I don't, you know, you're never really done learning a language, even your native language, yeah, right? Of course, of course. So I've been learning uh, 11 languages. Of those 11, there are only, I would say seven are languages that I can have a substantial conversation in. Okay. The other four are still in I don't know, like a superficial stage. Yeah. Not, uh, still learning them for you know conversational purposes but the the language that i speak well enough for conversation would be english which is my i would consider it my native language language okay. i grew up with your mother tongue uh, yeah but also i speak uh, spanish arabic portuguese french persian and turkish like a machine gun man <laughs> bah, 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 right after one after another that is yeah i mean that is quite quite the list and the, for the for the four that you're not too comfortable with the other four that i'm still uh, developing would be yeah. Catalan, armenian turkish and hebrew damn damn yeah. i mean i i know some dothraki phrases <laughs> that is my favorite part about Richard. I will show you guys a video of Richard speaking Dothraki. But yeah, I hope you were as like amazed by that, just simply amazed by that as I was when the first time I saw that. I was like, damn. And he does look like he deserves to be on the show. So maybe a uh, Game of Thrones executive or director will We'll see this and, uh, and and put you on board. But um, that is really cool. So if you guys don't know about me, and just generally for this uh, kind of uh, series, it's not going to be like so interviewee. It's more like it's a typical YouTube collab. Like if, if Richard was right here, except he's not here. He's, you know, thousands of miles away. But if he was right here, that's kind of how we're doing it. Um, so about me, I was raised in new york i'm half nigerian half irish um and i was only really raised with one language my dad speaks Igbo, which is nigerian language but he never taught me ouch i really wish he did um but apart from that uh yeah i taught myself starting from the time i was around 15 years old um i start my, started teaching myself japanese and then after that i taught myself russian and um dutch and also french and like like richard said it's constant research and development it's not like they're perfect but i have had like hour-long conversations in each of those languages at my peak ability so yeah i'm i'm, I'm happy with that um but yeah i mean so i i really want to get into um you know kind of comparing and contrasting our our methods to to learning um and let's just hop right into it and and kind of take a look at um well first w which languages were you raised with and which ones did you teach yourself from like you know teenage years uh, yeah. going onwards sure so um like i said i was raised with english um but i had uh, exposure growing up to spanish and also to arabic although um, Spanish, I started learning Spanish when I was about 13 years old. Okay. And, um, even though I had exposure to Arabic, I didn't start uh, learning it until five years ago. And so I have Lebanese ancestry on my mom's side of the family. So yeah. 
I was, you know, Arabic was kind of an important language for me to learn. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is quite the story. So it seems like most of them are, are self-taught. So that's kind of perfect to, to kind of segue into our next topic, which is what is like the first thing that you do when you're interested in a language, you have a language that's like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna learn it, I'm gonna learn it. What, what is the first thing that you do uh, in order just to start learning a language? Well, in general, I would say that I learn languages um, for two main reasons, and sometimes I sometimes those reasons go hand in hand. Uh, the first one is because of cultural appreciation. I'll find a, a culture or some type of thing in a culture that I really appreciate, and since learning languages is something that I love to do, um, I I end up going into that language, doing research on it, listening to audio files, and. Um, I kind of become, I don't know, entranced by it. So this is then the second reason would be um, travel destinations. Yeah. I learn, I learn languages of places that I would want to travel to because, I mean, for for the reason of cultural appreciation. Oftentimes, I mean, I think that the best way to appreciate a culture, if the culture doesn't speak the same language as as your, you know, as your native language, mm. is by learning its language, you know, so you can have those eyes to see yeah of course I, um that's that's kind of actually it kind of mirrors my experience in terms of 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 getting interested in the language uh but more specifically like let's say uh okay you know that you're going to travel to turkey yeah. okay you start to pick up turkish what is that you know the first whether that's grab a textbook whether that's watch you know a tv show whether that's download a podcast what what usually you know um, generally is a thing that uh you kind of do first resource Gen generally generally i go directly to youtube okay before anything. and uh i'll type in really simple things you know if i'm if i want to learn um i don't know i want to learn some uh galician so I just type in Galician language and I listen to sound samples. There's this really great YouTube channel called Wiki Tongues. Mm, you know? I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, and it's just full of, you know, languages and dialects and varieties of language, accents of different languages, and you can just spend a really long time on there listening. So first I go and I listen to samples of the language. And then the second step is I generally go and research the grammar of the language because I'm really interested in grammar and structure, um, the way languages work. And then the third thing I do is look for resources. Okay, I see. Nice, nice. That's that's like, in a way, it's kind of similar to what I do, um, but obviously in a way not. So for me, like the first thing that I will do, uh, I mean, just to give you an example, I'm almost satisfied with my French level so far. So within the next, I think, probably in two months time, I'm going to start learning Chinese. But I've already started researching Chinese TV shows uh, because for me, I, can, I guess that's the first thing that I do. Um, and I, I guess it kind of ties back to what you said earlier in terms of appreciating culture and kind of wanting to hear how the language sounds. Um, Whenever, regardless of language, whenever I'm, I'm learning a new language, I will search out media, usually music, but sometimes TV shows and films um, that will kind of captivate me and kind of really motivate me further to, to learn a language because I just feel like if I'm watching a, you know, a, a cool series about 1940s China and there's a cool, ch there's a cool character and, you know, he's got that sway, he, he's moving right and he speaks Chinese with a really cool kind of voice. And it's just like, whoa, I want to be like that. And um, maybe it's a bit of a, a younger kind of thing, but it's just it really works for me. I mean, if I get hooked on a, on a TV series, that's it. I'm learning the language, you know, so I mean, um, and obviously there's, there's a lot of deliberation. There's a lot of like, okay, I need to learn this and this, or I need to watch this and this at certain stages. Um, but yeah, generally for me, that's kind of what I do first. But um, let's say you are uh, kind of in that middle beginner range to the intermediate range. Generally, what do you do in order to kind of, what what resources exactly do you use to, to kind of bridge that gap between, let's say beginner and intermediate? Great. So um, the first thing I do when I'm doing my research for resources is I look in two places. Um, I look on Amazon.com <laughs> uh, for books just to see what's out there. I look at the reviews 
and things like that. I, I'll also sometimes go check my local bookstores um, just to see what's available. And the second thing I do is I Google to research if there are any um, cultural or language centers in my area that teach that language. Oh, that's and good. I check out, yeah, I check out, you know, the cost of the classes and when they're offered just to see, you know, if I, if I can afford that right now and if I have time to do that right now. Yeah. Um, but if I've already begun learning the language on my own, say from a book, um, then what I'll eventually do between that beginner and intermediate stage is um, I start to gravitate toward a specific variety of that language. So what I mean is that when I was learning uh, Portuguese, mm. in the beginning level, I just, I, I was actually in a classroom setting for this and uh, the teacher was Brazilian and I wanted to learn Brazilian Portuguese. But as you know, um, there are so many varieties of Brazilian Portuguese and it's a huge country. So I decided that I wanted to learn the Carioca variety, which is the variety they speak in Rio de Janeiro. So what I did from there is I, you know, went on, uh, went on the internet, looked for the Carioca slang um, from, uh, from my Brazilian friends, which I had made a few. Um, there were a couple who, you know, were from Rio de Janeiro. So I tried to practice with them a little bit more, imitate their accent, you know, really hone in because this is, I think once you get past the beginning level, you start yeah. to go into immediate, it's almost time to start giving your your language its uh, seasoning. You know, okay. it, in my point of view, it's time to start, you know, figuring out the little the little things that, you know, uh, that so that, you, so that, you know, you stop, not stop, but you're talking less like a book and more like a native. Mm, I see, I see. That's that's such a really interesting thing. So it's it's more, what I, what I noticed from what you just said is it's a very like specific approach. Uh, and it's very kind of targeted, like going in Google, looking at the specific slang. So for example, one of the languages I want to learn in the future is uh, Spanish. And I've already researched that I want to learn the, the Paisa accent from Colombia, you know, the same one as... Um, Pablo Escobar, you know, I was like, oh, because I did a lot of research. A lot of people say it's like one of the cool, coolest ways to speak Spanish. Um, and I guess in, in that case, you would kind of look into the specific grammar terms or the specific uh, words that they use, the specific terms, uh, how they, they might you know, conjugate words differently or anything, little slight differences. But that's really cool. Uh, is there... Okay, so for, for example, generally for me, usually going from beginner to intermediate stage, uh, there are two programs that I usually use. Uh, the first being Pimsleur, and Pimsleur is like kind of like an audio program um, that really kind of gets... I mean, you can, you can not know anything about the language, and you do it, and after completing it, you're somewhere around upper beginner, you know, you can, you can, it really focuses on your pronunciation, so your pronunciation should become better over time. And then after that, I switched to another program called Asimil, which is really, I guess, popular in the language learning community. And it, it should take you from anywhere between beginner to, uh, I'd say, like a intermediate, kind of rough intermediate. And if you supplement that with, like, you know, like what I always do watching TV shows in that language, um, then it kind of will take you further because you get more listening skills is there any like um because you 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 uh you know some some very commonly spoken languages but also some more unorthodox more rarely spoken ones so do you find that there's constantly like a program or specific like textbook that you're using for all of them or is it very kind of more tailored to the language that you you're learning yeah actually that's a great thing to bring up because um when it comes to languages i consider myself more of a traditional learner. And what okay. I mean by that is that, um, especially in the beginning and intermediate stages, I put a lot of focus on grammar and structure and creating my sentences, which is you know, quite different from a lot of the modern methods of teaching where they put you in a, a classroom or give you a type of book and they're like, okay, just speak, whatever. Mm -hmm. Even if it's wrong, just speak. Um, whereas I'm more of like, no, no, I wanna learn the structure and things like that. Is, that is the way that I learn languages best because I, I have to make it's like a math problem to me, right? And I have to go from from the beginning. It's only actually until and and on that note, um, there are less and less language books I think that teach in that traditional method, and more uh, programs like Pimsleur and Asimil and even uh, Living Language. You know these these programs yeah. that a bit more modern. Um, however, I do find the scattered grammar books in whatever language here and there and I 
uh, I use them both in tandem, I guess you'd say. Um, but I do find the approach of like, you know, creating my own sentences. If I have a friend who speaks that language, asking them two questions. First of all, did I make this sentence correctly? Did I, did I structure it right? And secondly, is this how you'd actually say it? Because they're, you know, I look a yeah, lot at Diglossia, yeah. the, the way it's written and the way it's actually spoken. So learning those two themes. And then once I get to more advanced levels, then I find that I am comfortable with using resources like Asimil, um, and Asimil, I would say, and Living Language. Those okay, are two that okay. I use. But once I get to more of an upper intermediate advanced level, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally, because I'm a traditional learner, I wouldn't start with them. So yeah, that's that's quite interesting because for me, um, that's like I recognize that as more of like a uh, kind of I guess structured approach. Um, whereas with with my one, it's more like it's not necessarily do what you feel like. I mean, obviously the structure behind the programs that you use, but it's it's very much so um, immerse yourself in in the language in terms of media, in terms of music, um, and use a program that's designed to get you from you know A to A to B, for example. Um, and then after that, that's kind of where I start to take, I guess, things from from you in terms of. Um, looking at the specifics of a language, knowing which kind of accent I want to go for, um, and kind of really trying to perfect the way I speak, trying to perfect my accent. And um, I don't really, and but much like you, I don't really like to speak to people until I can actually understand what they're going to be saying back. Because what happens is that, um, you know, a lot of people, they'll go on italki.com and they'll go and start taking lessons, um, but they've never spoken or they never even, you know, did any research on the language. They haven't been practicing at all. They haven't been learning it. So literally they're going and spending $10, you know, an hour for someone to teach them how to say dog and cat, you know, and I have versus they have and stuff that they can kind of learn for themselves. So I'm always like a person like, I will go like six months without even speaking it, but I will I will get up my understanding to the level where I can understand uh, TV shows without subtitles. And then once I'm there, once I can understand it at this native rate, for more or less, then I will start speaking to people. And from what I've found is that like, once I make that switch, it's really quick. And you know, within a month's time of con consistent talking, I can actually talk to people, which is a, uh, which is quite cool. But I mean, that's cool that we kind of cover both of our. Uh, I guess method slash a general approaches through the through the different stages. Uh, but I'm curious because I'm always curious, and we do have to wrap this up uh, because otherwise it'll get too long. But like, I'm curious, what, how has langu learning languages personally impacted you? And I mean, what's some kind of like what's a kind of cool story or experience that you had because you learn languages that you wouldn't have had if you uh, did not learn languages? And I'm sure you have a lot because you, you know, you're a language god. But <laughs> I mean. No, no, no. Talk to me. Just, I'm just, a, I'm a humble language server. Let's say that. Um, let's see. Um, I would say that it has uh, impacted my life in a, in a couple of different ways that I can think of right now. So one is that um, if I do have the opportunity to travel somewhere, um, usually I can go to a place and uh, speak with locals. Um, I tend, I tend to learn a bit of the language to the places that I'm traveling with before I go. Um, and that is very valuable because you know, when you make local friends in certain places, you get to see different things about that place. And um, that makes for a really amazing travel experience. And not only that, but you get to meet other travelers. Um, you can usually find a language in common uh, with that person the more you speak or the more they speak. And secondly, um, I believe that learning a language whether it's consciously or subconsciously, you, you get a grasp of a new grammar, a new way of thinking, and that also involves recognizing patterns in that language. And so training your brain to recognize patterns in a language, I think, trains your brain to recognize patterns in other areas of life as well. So um, it's really, it's brain exercise. You're build, you know, building a muscle. Um, and Secondly, I can't remember the second part of what you asked me. Any like cool or crazy kind of experiences that you've had, like stories? Because I think we've all had one where you overhear someone or anything like that that's happened uh, because you've learned languages that you wouldn't have the experience of having. 
Yeah, so uh, I can think of a, I mean, a couple of stories is uh, once I had a Turkish friend come to visit me where I live now, uh, which is in Lebanon, and uh, he didn't he doesn't speak English or Arabic. And then I had one of my other friends uh, with me who speaks uh, Arabic and English, but uh, Arabic much better. So I was sitting there and we were all hanging out, having a good time. And so I was, you know, and I was doing, I was having jokes with each one of them in each of the languages. And uh, when, you know, one would laugh. And so I would say like, okay, this is what he said. And I was translating between Arabic and Turkish. And I, I was like, wow, this is so cool. But I mean, if you know about these two, like my brain was getting exhausted because if you know about these two languages, you know that the grammar structure of these two languages is very different. So it was like I was having to really re not just change the words, but reverse my mind and the way I was thinking about sentences and things like that. But it was a really cool experience. And I, the, the second one that I can think of is, you know, I took a recent trip to Spain and, um, and uh, I was able to see a lot of really amazing, I don't know, I guess you could call it local things, just because I, I made some local friends in each city that I went to. I'm a pretty outgoing person. So I, you know, usually have pretty good luck with that. And they showed me a side of, you know, the different cities that I would have never seen had I not spoken uh, Castilian Spanish. That, yeah, that is, that is, I think you, you hit it. Uh, you hit the nail on the head right there because honestly when it comes down to learning languages that's that's what it's all about is making connections that you would you know would never in a million years be able to to have if you didn't speak the language um and you know what you just said about going to spain and and being shown a side of spain that you would never have you know the privilege or the opportunity to see is is like the coolest thing and for me i guess um you know, kind of going back to your story where you're translating in between both of them. I remember the first day of uh, of this like pre-university course that I took. Um, I you like assigned a partner just so people aren't weird, socially weird, and like don't talk to anyone. And there was like I was I think assigned this girl, and it was like lunchtime, so I was already talking to her throughout the day, and she happened to be from Japan. And then uh, this other girl comes randomly comes and sits down um, at like right right I guess uh, uh, next to her, and uh, she happens to be from Russia, you know. And and then you know I didn't tell the girl from J Japan that I could speak Japanese because there was a lot of Chinese people there. So I thought she was just Chinese. I just assumed, right? And then I actually like asked, hey, where are you from? Japan, where are you from? Russia. And I was like, hey, <laughs> you know, and I just kind of like, you know, went like this. And obviously one of the coolest things is uh, when you don't look like you can speak the language because Russian, Japanese, I definitely don't look like I can speak either of those languages. So, you know, the shock on people's faces, but even more so than the shock is the smiles that you get always like, why are you, why? It's like, it's this nice like combination of shock and surprise and just happiness. And I really do like that. Um, but in terms of like, you know your second example i mean you know i went to russia back in in, in the summer uh or just before summer and you know just just there was a guy from peru there right R randomly but one of the guys uh that was running the program that, the student program that we're doing uh he was from peru but he moved to russia like four four years prior and he taught himself russian and you know here we were just two dudes uh, one from peru one from america you know Surrounded by a bunch of drunk Russian dudes, or just like, eh, братан, ну, ну что, брат? You know, just kind of go going at it, talking in Russian, and it was just one of these cool moments. Especially when you're drunk, you kind of have this realization, like, wow, this, this should not be happening. There's like, there's, there's many, like, no, almost no Americans and no people outside of Russia has had have had this kind of experience of, you know, getting drunk with Russian people in Russia, you know, and just kind of, um, just having experiences that you wouldn't have had otherwise uh and of course people are just being like well, like why do you know russian and uh you know that kind of surprise and shock that's that's always good but anyways um that's basically it's quite it's quite long but i mean it's the first first installment first of the series so no problem there um but i just wanted to know if you have any tips uh like last minute tips or shout outs maybe you want to shout out your website your instagram and also maybe like I don't know if there's one resource. I mean, I guess we already talked about resources. So just, you know, some maybe last minute tips 
or advice and you know your your websites where people can find you sure i would say i mean this is coming from a personal uh, side but learn a language that you you know that uh, comes from a culture that you'd really like to see or a place that you'd really like to go because you know i think that's a great motivation for learning languages uh, it's very common i think for uh people to start learning a language but then give up and uh you know, maybe because they're learning this language for business purposes or because they think it's useful. But I think digging more deeply into why you want to learn that language will give you a better motivation for continuing to learn it. So that would be, I guess, my tip. Um, and as far as anything, I, I have an Instagram. So I guess if people, if anybody wants to follow me on Instagram, they can. Um, I'll actually, once I get my YouTube channel up, I'll put it as a link under the uh, under the bio but for now i just have uh, my instagram there are a few videos of me on there but there will be more so thank you perfect perfect and uh for, for me guys i mean to subscribe to the channel that's all i want from you if you want to check out my instagram as well uh it's like kind of obi and i will of course uh link richard's instagram down below number uno in, in the description so uh guys thank you so much for watching uh thank you richard for for being on Thank you and, for having me. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, this is a very interesting kind of new series that I want to kind of kick off. And I just, you know, really want to, I, I can't say enough that there's so many people out there and there's so many people that are doing amazing stuff with languages. Um, and there's a lot of different methods that you can kind of go with and a lot of different approaches. It doesn't have to be like you see one guy who speaks 15 languages and, you know, he spends five hours a day learning them and then you have to do exactly what he does. Otherwise, you can't learn them. No, there's so many different, you know, interesting people out there and people with different stories and backstories. And at the end of the day, um, like Richard said, if you want to learn a language, choose one that you you just want to know more about. You're you're um, enthralled by the the culture that surrounds it because if you do that, and that means it's going to be less likely that you quit learning a language. And if you don't quit, well, most likely you're going to learn it because the actual process of learning a language isn't too hard. It's just that consistency to keep on doing it uh, day in and day out. That's the hard part. But if you can do that. You're good. It's all ace. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and uh, see you in the next video. Take care.